Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel movie files Elliot back again with a brand new Netflix TV series review and today ladies and gentlemen we are back on the Outer Banks talking season two this is gonna be a fun time we're talking pros cons character moments we're gonna talk some spoilers later on in this video and talk about where this show can go next this is gonna be such a fun time and I'm so excited to be here and breaking it all down for you all but before we dive into it make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts if you all are new to the channel well welcome to the community consider subscribing to the channel and while you all are at it make sure you hit that notification bell that way you all can get the alert from when i drop new content if you all enjoyed this discussion of the outer bank season two we make sure to like this video share this video it helps out the channel a lot but i also appreciate all the support and in those comments let's talk all things season two of outer banks what were some of your favorite moments your least favorite moments who was your mvp for the season and once we talk spoilers what do you hope to see if they get renewed for a season three, which I think they will, but let's discuss it all in the comments below. So listen, man, who would have known a year ago when I watched this show, this was in the heat of the pandemic. So I was watching everything because I mean, I, I, movies were shut down. So I found myself watching the show. I reviewed it last year and I was kind of in the middle. I loved the first half of the show, Treasure Hunt, John B figuring out what happened to his dad, the compass, the gold, all that stuff. And then once we got into the second half, the, and I know it's, it's a YA, so there's going to be some shipping going on with characters. John B. and Sarah and Topper and the tri Love Triangle. You know, we get everything with Pope and Key and all that stuff. And it was fine, but I am excited to be here talking season two because I'm not going to lie, guys. I was pretty excited to see what this show has to offer because there's one thing about this show. It is so unrealistic, but it's so damn entertaining. And season two is even wilder than season one. So the way I want to handle this review is I'm going to spend the first half of this video just non-spoiler discussion, character breakdowns, what I liked about the season, what I didn't like about the season. Again, keeping it spoiler free for those that haven't seen all 10 episodes of season two quite yet. So I'm going to leave time codes in the description so you can know when to pop in, when to pop out, all that fun stuff. And then the second half is just going to be like a spoiler discussion. It's not going to be too structured. I'm going to talk about, you know, individual episodes, talk about my thoughts of a season three, and just having a discussion in the second half of this video. So sit back, relax, get your surfboards, and let's talk some Outer Banks. So let's start off with the spoiler-free portion of this video. Just my initial thoughts coming off of season two. This is even wilder, bigger in scope and scale. I couldn't believe half the stuff that they did in this particular season. I mean, there were moments where, I gotta say it, man, this felt like I was watching Fast and Furious because number one, I'm gonna say John B is Dom Toretto. You know, Sarah is Letty and, and, and all the other characters fall in line with other characters that we see in this franchise because literally there are things that happen in season two where I'm just like, this is ridiculous. I had to put my brain and put it over here and say, the Outer Banks is a magical, mythical place where things blow up, there's chases happening, there's cops that can't seem to catch these kids. These kids are smarter than adults. And when you do all that, you have an entertaining time. So I gotta say, I had a good time with this show, guys. It is over the top. It is way too dramatic. There are some really cheesy moments in the show, but listen, I love the cheese. I ordered a double cheese, triple cheese burger with an extra cheese on the side because this is my show, man. I had such a fun time with this season. The characters felt a bit richer. They felt a bit mature. They still do some really silly things. The parents in the show don't give a damn about what their kids are doing, or if they do, they're almost like overly protective. Uh, we'll talk about that with Key, but what a fun season, and yes, there are some criticisms that we'll talk about, but man, I just gotta say, I was kind of like on the fence about season one. I enjoyed the first half more than the second half, but this second season, it jumped right into it and never let go, and I'm so excited to talk about that later on in the spoiler portion, but going back to my positives with this season two, let's jump into these character breakdowns. Starting off with the ring leader of the crew, we're talking about John B, and listen guys, as I mentioned, this is the Fast and Furious of the Netflix shows. Dom Toretto, aka John B, he goes through the ringer in this season. The love that he has for Sarah and their moments throughout the first half of this season transitioning to just seeing them on the run. Because again, spoiler alert, if you saw season one, they are 
to their family and friends that think to have been killed on that boat accident at the end of the season. But we know from the trailer of season two, they're not going to kill John B. and Sarah, right? So we see them on the run and developing their relationship, which I'll talk about Sarah here in a bit. But just going back to John B., he is just as John B-ish as he was in <laughs> season one, ladies and gentlemen. He's the leader. He doesn't have the brightest ideas, but he has heart. He has determination. And one thing I do really uh, really enjoy about the John B. character, going back to me, comparing him to Don Toretto, it's about the family, man. It's about his friends. And he is willing to put his neck on the line to protect his family and his friends and his loved ones because he lost his loved one and his dad. So I really enjoyed the arc that we get with John B., which is essentially seeing this young 16 year old kid be on the run with the love of his life and seeing him just kind of learning to make a change learning to not be as vengeful as he was in the particular parts of the season and learning to just appreciate his family and friends and what he has in front of him so i really enjoyed that aspect but i can't talk john b and not talk about sarah right and listen i'm not gonna lie sarah had me really upset in this season at points especially in the second half of the season and i and i'll talk about it later in the spoilers but there's a reason why she does the things she does i kind of get it but it's just like good gosh sarah how many times does it take for you to finally learn something but nonetheless her arc was really interesting because she's dealing with a conflict ladies and gentlemen she's dealing with the idea of her whole life, everything has been given to her, but now she has to come to terms with the decisions of her father, Ward, the psychopath ways of her brother, Reef, and just all the stuff that she has been, you know, kind of groomed to think about certain people and just seeing her transition and, and trying to become more open-minded and become one of the crew was really interesting to see. So the John B. and Sarah stuff was really one of the, one of my least favorite things of last year was seeing that love YA triangle, but I really kind of appreciated the development they gave those two characters in this season. But I can't go off without talking about the crew, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start off with my main man, Pope, who has a lot to do in the season. Like he, his, his, the second half of this season is is strictly all about Pope, which I really appreciate it because it's a really kind of interesting, I don't want to give spoilers right now, but there's a really interesting thing about getting what was taken from you, learning about where you come, who you come from, and just seeing his determination to get back what is, was taken from his family. I really enjoyed that aspect, and I just enjoy Pope in general. He's a really cool character. He's a level-headed, uh, minded character in the show, even though in this season he does some stuff that's just like, come on, Pope, let's get back to uh, being the smart one in the group. But he goes through an arc in this season. We see his relationships continues to develop with Key in this season, but I really enjoyed him. Speaking of Pope, let's talk a little bit about Kiera, who, I'm not going to lie, out of the, everyone in the crew, she kind of stayed the same for me as she did in season one. She is obviously dealing with her becoming part of the Pogues and, and being a, you know an outlaw and trying to help her friends, trying to un, uh, help John B. and Sarah you know, clear their names and of being murderers, or at least John B. being a murderer of last year. And just seeing her, again, I enjoy that character. I enjoy that actress, but she wasn't given as much as some of her other crew members. But again, seeing her and Pope go back and forth and seeing her deal with her family and Man, you talk about family. I, If I was the parents of Kiara, Kiara, she would have been locked in the basement because she does some things in this season, which is just like, this girl really loves her friends. But I can't leave without speaking about the man himself. That's JJ. Now, JJ, he, to me, man, he's like the heart of the crew. Of course, he's the wild card. He makes these ridiculous plans, and he has some really crazy outlandish plans in this season. But what I love about JJ is going back to what I can love about John B. He he doesn't have his family, right? We know his abusive relationship that he has with his father, and he looks... I don't want to say he looks at John B. as a dad, but I think he looks at him more like a brother as he does with Pope and, you know, obviously Key as his sister. But I really just enjoy the heart that he has. That he's just willing to do anything and everything. Yes, it could be out over the top. Yes, it could be very risky and dangerous. But I just love the love that he has for his family. He has a really good, you know, kind of arc in this particular season. He's still doing some crazy outlandish stuff. But he, again, I just love that he just uh, appreciates what he has in his life. And he really wants to keep his friends safe. And, and I really love that about the JJ character. So, we got to transition and talking about characters that are the quote-unquote bad guys in the show. And I got to say it, my MVP for season two has to go to Ward, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, that might be crazy to say. Yes, he's the villain of the show. He's the bad guy. He's killed John V. Dad. He was, you know, did all the crazy stuff in season one. In season two, he does even more crazier stuff. There are more things that are bad that he does. There are more schemes, and he's thinking 10 steps ahead. I mean, there's a particular thing that he does in this season. Where I'm just like, 
this man is 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 uh, Walter White, <laughs> and I say that in a sense of he is so. I talked about the love that John B and JJ and everyone has for their crew. But the stuff that Ward does in season two to protect his legacy and his family, he's done. He's doing it selfishly, right? Because it's his ego and he's rich and he thinks he's old certain things and he's taking things from other people and legacy. But I have to lie. I, I can't lie. I always find myself sometimes when the villains are done well and they think they're the heroes of their own story, I always kind of root for them in the sorts. Now, when I say that, I am no means condoning the actions of Ward. I just appreciate the way he's written, how he's just so determined. He's the polar opposite of John B in regards to what he fight, fights for and I thought that Ward in season two was just he was living it up man he knew the role and he played it well in my opinion as is everyone does in the show but Ward was my MVP because I'm just like I hate him so much and he just does some things that was just ridiculous uh which I had a good time with and then speaking of ridiculous he was my least favorite character in season one for the acting and just character development I just wasn't a fan of him and his whole storyline especially with the drug dealer Barry but I gotta admit ladies and gentlemen I'm talking about Reef I'm not saying I'm coming around to the character because I still think there's some acting that is a little bit off. He's like he's the weakest, act, and I hate to call actors out, but I think he's the weakest actor in the entire show. But I also think that he is kind of given some complicated things with this character because when I tell you all, Reef is doing some things in this season too. When you see it, you know what I'm talking about. But I mean, my man is Michael Myers in this season, guys. I mean, he is on a psychopathic kind of journey of killing and. I mean, he does something. I'll talk about it in my spoiler portion, but he does some things in this season that was just like, woo, this kid is lost his marbles upstairs. But I, I did, like I said, I will commend him. I did feel more for the character. I felt the performance was stronger than it was in season one. I know people love Reef uh, for their own personal reasons, but I thought that he was just terrible in season one as, like I said, acting and all that stuff. But in this particular season, I thought that they definitely gave him more to do, and he was definitely the wrench into our main character side. He was a thorn in the main character side. He was there everywhere throughout the season, just pissing me the hell off. So commend him. And outside of that, because I think I touched on all the main characters, uh, Topper, all my Topper fans, you know, light spoiler, he's not in it as much as he was in season one. He does have an appearance and he had, makes his presence felt and he's there for a particular character when they need him most, but he's not in it as he was, as much as he was in season one. So as far as characters go, again, I felt like the characters were richer in this season. They had more to do. They were more developed. Uh, they were involved in some really crazy stuff. I mean, seriously, Outer Banks, the cops, there were so many car chases. There were so many heist uh, there were the scope was there. We were in the Bahamas. We were all over the place. So this is definitely a bigger season, and I think that the the writers of the show know what the show is. They entertained the hell out of me in this second season, and it was a lot of fun. But it doesn't go without its criticisms. Before I give you all my overall thoughts, just jump to my criticisms. I mentioned it before. The show knows what it is, but at the same time. I, I can't lie, it does have those CW Riverdale type of moments where it's just like so over the top, so melodramatic, so unrealistic. Again, I have to turn my brain off sometimes because I'm just like, there is no way in hell, again, I have to look at these people like Fast and Furious franchises, like there's no way in hell they should still be alive. There's no way in hell that this person can survive this. There's no way in hell they can carry certain... It, it, you have to shut the brain off some time, but I'm not going to lie. It's just like sometimes the writers do put, as an audience member, put you in a bind and just be like, this is just... I can't buy this. I can't buy this moment right now. And again, I mentioned the characters know who the characters are, but there are some moments where the acting isn't as strong as it could be. And I'm looking at a character like Reef. Uh, sometimes I'm looking at a character like Sarah. And we also get introduced to this new set of people in this particular season that... One of them worked for me. They kind of left a character uh, unknown, and then they came back, and it's a character by the name of Cleo, who was a really fun character, and I don't want to give too much away from her, but she's introducing this season. Also, we meet this character by the name of Carla, who easily was, she was the reef of this season for me. I did not enjoy anything that Carla and her storyline added to this season, and their particular plot involving another treasure hunt to me wasn't as interesting as season one treasure hunt was, and it was almost like supernaturalists, if I'll just say that about this particular piece of, of MacGuffin that we're looking at in the second half, which brings me to another thing of my criticism, and it kind of brings me back to season one. This season, 
the first half of the season was much more stronger, much more cohesive, much more of a narrative, tighter narrative than it was in the second half. Again, I enjoy the character that they focus on the second half, which is Pope, but everything involving this MacGuffin, Carla, her brother, the Hunters, the last episode is like an hour mini movie kind of ridiculous action over the top film and I just thought that the second half just again it plays into the ridiculousness and the cheesiness which I enjoy but it was just like wow this is going, kind of going a little bit off of the rails for me which the first half was just a little bit more like I said more personal more concise more put together than the second half so those are kind of my main criticisms without really diving into the spoilers so with all that being said I'll say this about Outer Banks season two I think it's stronger than season one I think it has as a much more of an ambitious and larger scope and scale as far as the production and kudos to the production team getting this show out so quickly it just came out in April and we're already here with the season two which we'll talk about of maybe a season three in the future but I had a good time with the show it does have its flaws it is over the top it is unrealistic but I was entertained for season two and I prefer season two over season one so with that being said if you were a fan of season one of the Outer Banks you're going to love season two and if you're someone that's new to the Outer Banks I don't know how people would be like open to this show without seeing the first season so I definitely recommend you all see the first season before diving to the second season but I had a good time with it so 16 minutes of spoiler free thoughts I'm gonna leave maybe the last five minutes or so just talking a little bit of the spoilers and let's just start it so again Spoilers ahead, let's talk about some of those moments that kind of left me kind of speechless at times. So with episode one, we obviously know that Sarah and John B were alive. They go to the Bahamas, they come across Cleo and Torrance and his whole crew and all that, which... I'm not going to lie, they were a little bit kind of over the top for me and kind of underdeveloped as well, especially when we see Torrance, I guess he's dead with the Bahamas cops. We never really follow up with him as well as we obviously find out that Cleo in episode 10 she made it off when she jumped in the water and she's like Aquaman. She can just find her way in the water and find her a crew to work for. But nonetheless, the first episode was a little bit rocky because the biggest thing for me in episode one, when it came to the emotional aspect of learning for the crew, thinking and, and assuming that John B and Sarah were dead, I felt like it was a little bit rushed. I wish we would have set in that emotion a little bit more in regards to the crew really being down and out. But obviously they find out by the end of the episode that they're still alive. But I, I got to say the first episode, it didn't hook me right away until we got to episode two and I think episode two to me was my favorite episode that's involved in the heist where we see John B and Sarah teaming up with Chloe or uh, Cleo and her crew and they ultimately do get the gold but then Sarah gets shot by her crazy ass brother Reef who like I mentioned in my spoiler free half this boy was on a killing spree now he is responsible for the death of the police last year but he was attempted murder how many times this season? And ultimately, by the end of the show, he didn't kill his sister or shoot at them. But man, he was on a killing spree. And that man got some mental issues, ladies and gentlemen. But episode two, to me, like I said, was just uh, was really fun. It was entertaining. I really enjoyed it again. I'm a sucker for heist stuff. So I really enjoyed the heist aspect of episode two. And again, leaving us to think that Sarah was shot and Sarah might die. It's like, come on, these, these characters are, are bulletproof. Like I said, they're, they're Fast and Furious characters at this point. But episode two, to me, was really, really fun and really entertaining. In episode three, again, we're seeing more of Reef becoming that psychopath. We see, again, this is where we learn that T and her, her friends might have been killed and and this brings me to the question what happened to the gold now i'm assuming that the bahamas police force has the gold which means that it's still there so i don't know if we get a season three is it breaking the gold out of the bahamas i don't know if we'll ever go back to that thread line but again the biggest thing was what happened to t and his bodyguard are they dead are they arrested are they going to be in season three let me know your thoughts on that episode four this is where we meet carla and i mentioned in my spoiler free portion that carla pope the cross, that supernatural healing storyline to me was just a little bit kooky for me and it really didn't buy into it. And that Carla character, I just didn't really care for. I like that actress. I've seen her in a lot of things, but her and her brother and their whole kind of weird relationship, half brother situation. And we'll talk about the ending obviously with Carla, but I wasn't a big fan of that storyline. That's where we start to, it starts to rear its ugly head into the plot, but I'm not going to lie. I got pretty emotional seeing our main crew of people seeing each other for the first time all season. It took four episodes for the crew to see each other while 
John B. and Sarah run away from the guy they took the money from, and then the rest of the crew was running away from Carla's brother. When they see each other for the first time, I felt that because I really do enjoy these characters. I have a fun time with these characters, so I really enjoyed that reunion of the crew getting back. And then from there, episode five, we see John B. He turns himself in. He goes to jail. We see our boy JJ trying to come up with the elaborate plan to get him out of jail. He almost dies in jail, as well as Sarah. This is where, again, Michael Myers, Reeve, tries to kill his sister in cold blood and drowns her. But then I mentioned that Topper wasn't heavily involved in the season, but that's where Topper gets into the mix he saves Sarah and they kind of he tries to get back in the romance and tries to get back in the good grace of her uh, but by the end of the episode this is where the SBI comes in on Ward and tries to arrest him for what he did and all the killings that he's done so that brings us into episode six with the SBI taking over the house this is where Sarah and Topper are getting closer John B and they go to the bonfire and all that different stuff and this is where they ultimately break up but then we have this moment here where Pope discovers that he is related to Denmark and the whole again that whole plot to me just wasn't my favorite per se Barry the drug dealer he rats out Reed for which he gets arrested and we have all that stuff going on and the biggest thing that the show leaves us on is that we are to assume that we see Ward make up the elaborate plan of blowing himself up, leaving us as the audience thinking that he killed himself, but we know he makes his return because no one ever stays dead in the Outer Banks except for the black cop that died in season one, or who knows, maybe she'll come back next year. But episode seven, we see again Ward leaving the goodbye video, uh, thinking that he's dead. And the biggest thing that we see in this episode is that Pope gives the key to Kara and her sister and her brother, and they find and then they do the whole thing uh, and figure out that again, I wasn't a big fan of that particular plot. But episode eight, we see the hunt of the MacGuffin of the cross. We see that she thinks she's going to be healed, but she ends up finding the cross and doesn't get healed. John B., as I mentioned, a.k.a. Dom Toretto, fights an alligator and survives. He wins the fight. He gets bitten up, and that whole the, his leg was just magically healed for the rest of the season. But he wins the fight of the alligator. But nonetheless, they find the cross, but they unfortunately leave it in the church, leaving it to Reef and the brother of Carla to find the cross and put it in their possession, which brings us into... Pope having the allergic reaction, going back and finding that they took the cross. We have Pope versus Reef round three, which he gets his ass beat yet again. We see that Key's parents want her to send her to boarding school, but she ultimately decides to help out uh, Pope after getting beat up. And all this stuff going on with John B and Sarah, they inevitably be getting back together and after being broken up for half of the episode, but then they come back together as we always assume. And this is where we see that we get a cliffhanger at the moment where we see Sarah go back to her house, Rose drugs her with and then wants to take the family to this trip and this whole paradise and get away and then we end the episode with Sarah being on the boat, opening the door and seeing that her father is still alive, which brings us to the finale episode 10 and this is where we're going to talk about the ending and talk about what I think would be a potential plot and what we can expect to see in a season 3, but literally episode 10 was a mini movie. It was just literally action kind of over the top action and just like I don't know what the plan was for our crew to get the cross which seems to be a, a 3,000 ton but apparently two people can pick up the cross but then it takes the, the whole crew to get the cross the, the the weight of that cross was a little bit sketchy for me but ultimately we see Pope throws the cross in the water which was just like they gave up on the cross but then the crew gets it back and again, I don't know what the plan was. It was them to get on that lifeboat and take that heavy ass cross with them on the boat and go travel back to home. It didn't make sense. Again, these are kids. You got to remember that a 16 year old, they don't really think things out. But nonetheless, Chloe is now, Cleo is now part of the crew. They're on their own island. John B is happy with his friends. They're going to go ahead and set up shop there, do some sur surfing and whatnot. Sarah B, everyone's happy. Everyone's safe. We see that Ward's family, they're going to now, they have the cross in their possession. They reefs vows to save Sarah and bring her back to the family, which again, the whole thing with Sarah being, I'm a part of the family. I care. I get it. It's her dad. It's her. It's, she, she grew up with this people in her house. And obviously it could be a bit of a shaken up thing, but how many times Sarah did it take you to realize this? But we see Reef vows to his father to bring Sarah back on their way to this island that they're going to be living on with this cross, which again, I don't know 
I'm not a treasure hunter. I don't know if you go to a museum with a, a, a cross covered in gold and you can just say, hey, I would like my half a billion dollars. I don't know how that works. So they apparently are going to be living on the island while Reef is going to retrieve his sister and find her. And we're also ending the episode. This is where the Indian Explained comes in. We are in with the Carla character who hasn't died quite yet. She goes to this mysterious place and she has a conversation with no other than John B's dad. He is alive. He says, I will help you if you help my son. So it's just like, again, these parents on the show are ridiculous and can care less about their kids. This man is on an island. We're thinking he's dead. But he's been alive this whole time. And what the heck is he going to do to help Carla get what she wants? And how is she going to help his son? Because his, her, his, your son's fine. He's been cleared of murder. So I don't know what that means means so what does a season three look like well i'm assuming that john b will find out that his dad's alive i would see i would assume that carla and the ward family or ward are gonna go head to head for this cross or whatever mcguffin still left out there they're gonna find another thing that has magical mythical powers or they're gonna go back for the golden bahamas who knows but sign me the hell up because I'm a big fan of this show. And again, there has some over-the-top moments. There are some moments I really didn't care for. Seeing the whole scene, I can't remember what episode it was, but like just seeing our characters when we saw Pulp, Key, and JJ going after Ward and doing the whole video recording in the middle of the rain. He kills Gavin. That whole thing kind of played over the top for me. Whenever Barry and Reef are on scene, it's hilarious, but it is so bad, the acting to me, and just like they're back and forth. And I guess Barry, he's going to be back in season three, and maybe he's going to have uh, Reef give him a little, pay him a visit to, you know, make up for his vengeance of ratting him out. But nonetheless, the show has its lows, but at the end of the day, I was thoroughly entertained. I was laughing my ass off at some of these points. I had some good moments as far as entertaining moments with the action and being chased. And again, I got a little bit emotional seeing our characters seeing each other for the first time. And again, we're going to get more reunions next season if we inevitably get a next season, which I think we will, seeing John B, seeing his dad for the first time and all that different stuff like that. So let me know what your favorite moment was in season two. We're obviously talking spoilers, your least favorite moment. Uh, who do you think? will be, you know, uh, a, a character that we can maybe look forward to seeing having a bigger role in season three, like a key, uh, maybe more JJ. JJ needs someone to, you know, ship him with the character. Maybe that's Cleo. Uh, but also, what would you like to see in a season three? So we talk spoiler free thoughts. We talk spoiler discussion. And if you stuck around for all t almost 30 minutes of this video, I appreciate every single one of you. Again, time codes are in the description so you can kind of know where to kind of uh, revisit this video if you're watching this on a later date. But again, Again, thank you all for sticking around to the end of this video. If you haven't already, make sure to like, share, comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell. That way you don't miss any of my other content. Hope you all enjoyed this Outer Banks discussion. Hope you all are having a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.